thing that robots don't have to worry about yet. After dark, did <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Software Show. That's how we started the original program last April when we looked at a large number of software packages for you to use at home. In today's program, which is edited down from that long two and a half hour program, we're going to concentrate on graphics and music. For the moment, we'll let Alistair and John get on with their work and we'll look at some other music programs. How about that? Impressive? <laughs> this is a musical programme with a rather apt title of Compose. Now, each symbol represents a different tune, and by putting a pretty picture together, you get a pretty tune as well. Now, if I add another symbol, add another sun, and play it again, it simply adds that part of the tune on. Now, Compose is really for those without much musical knowledge, for beginners. Listen repeated the sun. However, you aren't just stuck with just one set of graphics. If we go back to the main menu, we can now choose options and from there we can go and get a new tune file from a library. Now you'll see it come up with various different ones. We'll go to Compose 6, accept Compose 6 and then try and make up a tune again. This time it will give us a completely new set of symbols and we can make up a new tune. Let's try something quickly and play it. Obviously slightly more Egyptian. Now that could prove to be pretty limited. So if we escape back to the main menu, the program does allow you not only to build up the symbols yourself in picture form, but also to build the musical tunes as well. So we take editor, and we want to edit a phrase. And you'll see it will come up with various forms of notation. They look as though they're in boxes. These are graphic symbols again, and it comes up with the equivalent of the musical stave. Now I can add a note, say, accept that, add another one, accept that, and play again. I have just created one of the phrases which could go with one of the symbols. Now, you can take this as far as it can go, but if it doesn't do enough for you, it's quite understandable, then how about this, the music construction set? This is being played on the Amiga computer. Now, let me just play what we have already. I'm using the mouse to move the cursor around. Now, it's missing something at the end. So, if I want to add a note, we'll accept that. It will bring out, now, does it take one of those notes? I'm not sure what they're called, because I'm not very musical myself. Now, I want to position it here. It's quite difficult to do it with the mouse, because it isn't that accurate. So, what I can do is bring it down onto the keyboard, accept that. It will have added it up here. Oops. And then we want to play it again. Let's see how it sounds this time. <laughs> Not very tuneful, that, was it? Now, so far, we've only seen computers with software packages. We haven't seen any keyboards. If we want to see something more advanced, something that professionals might use and that we can also use at home, have a look at this. <laughs> Not Ashley really. <laughs> Ingram from the group Imagination. Welcome Hi. to the software show. Can you explain a little bit about this system? This is the first time we've actually seen a keyboard being used with the computer. Well, basically, if you look at it like a computer is basically a recorder where you can play anything here and it records the moment in time, the actual notes which you play, and it converts it into data, numbers, in exactly the same way as you played it. If you played that, it'll grab that. Just like a tape recorder? Just like a tape recorder. Okay, can you show us how, how we do something then? Like, for example, if I was going to play down some drums, for example, I use a little box like this. Inside here we have lots of little sounds. 
that have their own channel numbers. So if I tell the computer to play, play me something from channel 10, I'll go to channel 10 here. Sounds like satellite television. <laughs> On channel 10 we have tonight <laughs> right. the drums. And so therefore, if I wanted to play some drums now into the computer, I'll hit that and... And here comes drums. And you can play in that for as much as you want. <laughs> so, the That's computer will have saved all that? That's now in the computer. It's right. in its MIDI buffer, which means that it sits there in the computer waiting for me to give it any one of the 60 channels inside here. Are they like upon. tracks that you would have in a recording studio? Because exactly we hear of eight track studios and 24 tracks, don't we? Mm -hmm. Exactly the same way. So you find your track, like for example track 20, I'm going to stick it down on. And I press keep. It's there now. I switch the track on, hit play, and what can happen? And there's, and there's your drums. Now, if I play that a little bit, a little bit slow or a little bit too fast, mm -hmm. basically out of time like most <laughs> of the time, <laughs> what I can do is go into a page here and call down something called quantize. And basically what that does is it looks at, if I start here and finish here, it looks at all those notes I played in the middle there and says, that was wrong, that was wrong, and it will move it forward or back to where it should be or to where the computer thinks it should be. I do that like that, press on a correction, and lo and behold, it should sound even... Should sound much better. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it, it actually it helps you compose an idea in your head. For example, you can hear the, the whole band, you can hear the bass, a bit of drums, and you put all the ideas together on a computer. And once you've done that, you can play it to the guy and say, hey, this is the kind of idea I had. Mm. And the drummer can say, well, okay, then I can take from this and take it further. So how much would this sort of system cost, Ashley? Well, for example, the Casio keyboard here, um, you can buy this for under £200. Which is, I think, is very competitive. But, of course, you could pay more if you want to. Well, we can always talk about that. <laughs> yes, you can pay up to thousands for a keyboard. Right. But um, it all depends on what you want and where you want to go with it. And what about the software? Well, the software, um, this particular software is about um, between 500 and 600 pounds you can right. pay for this kind of software. Um, it comes complete with synchronizing, synchronizing yeah. methods and things that you can use in your professional but that's studio. But that's obviously too, or could be too expensive for a home user. Absolutely, but um, with each purchase of a computer, like this 1040 here for example, there are companies who are giving away software packages with it, so therefore you get your computer and your sequencer package all together for a very realistic price. Well, Ashley, thank you very much. Thank you. Could you play us out? Certainly. Hazard went, can, turn, kick and push. <laughs> you can switch straight across the keyboards and hear some music. Ashley and Good, thank you very much indeed. Alistair and John have been beavering away now on the graphics and the music sequence for our titles. Alistair, you first of all, how are you getting on with the music? Oh, fine, thanks. Nearly finished. Try to listen. Yes, please. Let's have a listen. Now, how is this music different to the music we heard at the beginning of the programme? Well, what I try to do is uh, synchronise it with John's graphics. The beginning scale you hear corresponds to the, uh, the rising keyboard, which John did which in the graphics. slides up in, yes. Also, I try to change the instruments to the different fonts, like uh, the modern font represents a modern instrument. So, when you say the fonts, that says the software show, which change through the graphics. What I'd like to do is change the old English font to a harpsichord, for example. So, I don't think the harmonia which I've used is, mod is uh, old enough. I see. That sounds lovely. Have you got a lot more to do on it? Oh, yes, just a bit. <laughs> well, we'll uh, see you later on this evening. John, how about you? How are you getting on? Well, I'm working on uh, the background at the moment, which is uh, sort of pulsing circuits, because my first animation had a black background. 
So I've got That's a right, yeah. it. Um, and I've also taken this from uh, a proper circuit board, um, so it's quite accurate um, for it. So what else have you got, have you got to work on? Well, I've got to uh, get the keyboard smoother, of course. I'm going to make it a bit more 3D. And also uh, the text flying in. Um, I've got to do that, yet. Yeah. You're going to be a busy chap, aren't you? All right, well, all work. the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Now from one form of graphics to another. I promised you earlier that I'd show you how I printed out this software show T-shirt. And to help me is Jonathan Inglis, who designed this particular logo. Now, Jonathan, first of all, how easy is it to create original designs on a computer? Well, I think the most important thing to remember at first, certainly when you're starting, is not to be too ambitious. Often, the best designs are really the simplest. The other thing that you need to remember, too, is that drawing with a mouse isn't quite as easy as drawing with a pencil, and therefore you need to adapt your style to what the computer does best. I think the biggest mistake that people make when they first start is they try for a very realistic effect, trying to imitate the look of an oil painting or a photograph, which is very hard work indeed. Sure is it. Could you give us a little demonstration of uh, how you would go about creating the logo? Well, if we look at this figure here, I've drawn that. I haven't done any freehand drawing at all, because that's very fiddly. Instead, I've used the straight line, the curve, and the circle options to build up my figure quite simply. For more detailed work, what I do is I go in like this, and I can edit my picture pixel by pixel, like this. So that if I want to, for instance, give our little figure a moustache, it's as simple as that. And then I can go back to my main drawing. Now, you're using the Deluxe Paint 2 program, which That's we're right. actually using for the graphics for the program. Now, this allows you to repeat a pattern, doesn't it? That's right. It's one of the great beauties of the computer as a design aid is that once we've got an image, we can simply repeat that really quite simply. All we have to do is to window it which means we take an area of the screen and we simply take that and copy it across like this. So by using this repeat facility, you've arrived with the, the design of three men going across the screen. That's right, and I don't know if you can imagine using conventional materials to do all that copying. It would take ages because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce a little bit of colour by filling in our shapes like this. And very again, fast, isn't it? That's right. If you imagine doing this using conventional materials, you'd be taking a lot of time. And of course, the great beauty of the computer is if we don't like what we've done, then we simply undo it like this, <laughs> which Much is terrific. easier than using Tiflex, that's for sure. Um, OK, so you've now arrived at a design, and you did promise me that you'd personalise it for me by putting my name across. How do you go about doing that? That's right, Carl. Well, most computer programs allow you to add text anywhere you like on a picture, and this is no exception. All we have to do is to load in the correct uh, font and then type your name in. Now, we've arrived at that. That's fantastic. But obviously, we want to print out onto a T-shirt, so we need a reverse image. How can you do that using the computer? Well, you'll find that all computer programs offer you the chance to flip your images. That's to turn them around. Um, you can either flip part of the screen or the whole screen. Now, for our design, obviously, you want to flip the whole screen. So we'll do that now. So you've arrived at the flipped image, and now what do we do? Well, what we need to do now is to print out our image on the printer over here. As if by magic, it's finished printing. I'll just feed the paper through. And what we need now is a photocopy of the design. And if you can uh, photocopy that. Meanwhile, I shall show you how you can actually print it out on your T-shirt. If you don't have a computer, by the way, you can do this. If you want to take a photocopy of a reverse image of anything that you want to print out onto a piece of cloth, uh, what you should do is take the design to a photocopying shop and have a reverse image done for you there. Right, now then, what you need is your T-shirt and you need to mix one part of white spirit to two parts of water. Stick in a dash of washing up liquid. Give it a good shake so that you get a nice emulsion. Um, and that's the photocopy. There we are. Now then, this is the photocopy of the logo with my name on it. And you paint on quite a lot of this mixture onto the front, like so. 
want to get it quite wet and then turn it over and do exactly the same on the back. Now, I might warn you that not all photocopying machines produce the right sort of photocopier because they do use different types of inks and toners. So you might have to play around with different machines. All right, now then. You've uh, stuck in a baking tray, which is quite warm, That's isn't right. it? And that helps. If you put a baking tray underneath, the warmth will help the image transfer onto the cloth. Now then, this is the clever bit. You position it quite carefully. Take a wallpaper roller and roll it out. Now, what else could you do with this other than print onto T-shirts, Jordan? Well, there's no reason why you shouldn't do, use this technique for printing on any kind of fabric. Any design which requires a repeated design, um, you could use this, or you could use it to personalise things like pillow slips, um, that sort of thing. Now, you've finished rolling. You have to press quite hard on this. And now for the moment of truth. Pull it back. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Wonderful. Brilliant. Take the baking tray out. And there you are. Software Show T-shirt with my name on it. Now, Jonathan, how would we make this slightly more colourful? Just black and white. Well, there are all sorts of colour fast dyes that you can buy which you can either paint on or draw on to put extra colour. And then if you want to fix your design to stop it running, then you can use one of these fixatives here. Right. 